Welcome back to Dr. Confidential. Today we're gonna to be talking about the five secrets to gut-brain hormone connection. These are the top five things that will change the state of your hormones, your gut health, and your brain health. I'm super excited to do this. So, yeah, Rachel, are you ready? I'm ready, let's do it. So I'm Dr. Amy Shaw, and this is Rachel Brown, and we are here with Dr. Confidential. If you want to see more from us, you should like and subscribe below. So let's get into it. All right, let's start with number one. Remember when we're talking about the gut hormone brain connection, this is one thing. They are talking to each other all the time. So the first thing that I would say is the three F warning. So the first three steps are gonna be the three F warning. Right. The first F is fasting. Fasting doesn't mean that you have to skip breakfast or go for a long periods of time, like 24, 48 hours. What we're talking about is circadian style fasting. That is just taking a break for 12 hours, giving yourself gut rest. Your gut bacteria needs rest, just like your brain needs rest. And so a 12 hour circadian fast is how you should start the day, how your body's biologically meant to start the day. Yeah, and it, it really makes it a lot easier when you kind of factor in those eight hours of sleep. You know, it's not it's not as hard to do those four hours of not eating when you're gonna be asleep for only eight of them. Yeah, ideally it would be about 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. or 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. because you want that early dinner. Mm -hmm. That early dinner really lets your insulin levels reset. It's good for your hormones. Those of you who are into anti-aging, growth hormone gets released about an hour after you go to sleep, the biggest burst. And so they call it like the 10 o'clock beauty sleep, you know, so you really wanna be asleep by 10, 11 p.m. because that's when you're gonna get your biggest burst. And if you've eaten really a huge meal close to that time or you miss that window, it does affect your growth hormone release at that time. Okay, so a good way to set yourself up in the morning is... Yes, so if you're someone who is battling insulin resistance, especially or weight gain, menopause, PCOS, hormonal changes, all all of those people will really benefit from that first app. Okay, okay, number two. Number two is our favorite, I love this, fitness. fitness. Fitness is something that people underestimate as changing your health. So gut bacteria love fitness so much. Imagine them like little critters that are alive and living in, in this universe inside your gut. They get very excited when you exercise. In fact, we call exercising the best probiotic that you could ever have. So when they see you exercising, they release these things called short chain fatty acids. And these short chain fatty acids go all over the body. And it's like this anti-inflammatory cloak that you get from exercising. So if you want to change your life, start your day with a little bit of exercise. And maybe it's not first thing in the morning, but something early in the day, especially when it's outdoors, because you get that reset of the circadian rhythm. If you can manage two minutes, great. If you can manage one hour, awesome. This is gonna change the way you live. It's actually been proven, right, that exercise diversifies your gut and adds to those gut bacteria. Exactly, which is so crazy to think about because yeah, you're not really <laughs> adding gut bacteria when you exercise, but there is this effect on your gut that is just as good as eating healthy food, even Incredible. though you're not directly populating the gut with bacteria. So exercise is just amazing. And if you were wondering what kind of exercise, so if you're someone who's really seeking hormone, gut, and brain balance, the best thing you can do is go for a walk. So outdoor sunlight with a walk or a jog or some kind of outdoor hike activity is the ideal. Then you wanna mix it up with at least some weight training, especially if you're in that window of menopause, um, you wanna anti-age, you wanna add more muscle, you wanna add about three days of weight training as well. Yeah, I feel like us as women are kind of under the impression that it needs to be this high intensity cardio in order to see any type of difference in the body or the mind or anything. And it really doesn't have to be that way. And it doesn't even have to be in the gym. No. That was like, for me, that was like a game changer. I was like, wait, I don't have to be taking a class or going to the gym to actually get a workout. Wow, that takes the pressure off and it makes it a lot more doable and enjoyable actually. Absolutely. So that's the second F. Now we have the third F. The third F is the food portion. So we're gonna include fiber, high protein, and a fermented or probiotic food. So examples of this would be like an egg or tofu scramble with veggies. And then you have something fermented like a probiotic cottage cheese or yogurt. So not necessarily fermented, but probiotic food with it. So probiotic, protein, and fiber in that first meal. You wanna have you know, 30 grams of protein. In your day, you wanna have at least 25 grams of fiber and you want to have at least one serving of probiotic food a day if not up to three to five would be the 
like max level of benefit for gut bacterial diversity according to the studies. I know me personally, like really focusing on getting all those things in at breakfast just transforms my morning and my energy and the way my day goes. It's like day and night. <laughs> it's a game changer. And Rachel knows like when we meet up in the morning, I'm usually making my high fiber, high protein probiotic breakfast because I don't have a lot of time, but putting together a scramble really quick with veggies and a side of a probiotic cottage cheese or yogurt is something that's still doable for a busy person. You could also do a yogurt parfait with berries and nuts, and that's a great way to do it. You can make things the night before. There's a lot of ways to do it, even when you're super busy. Absolutely. That's, you know, what you eat is, you know, who you become. I truly believe that. So that is the last step. So we've gone through three steps, fasting, fitness, and the food. The fourth step for you, for all of you that are in the menopausal transition, there is something that you should know about the gut hormone brain connection. This is the secret to having a better transition through menopause, through perimenopause. So just so you understand the definition of perimenopause is the years, up to 10 years before your final period, which is officially menopause. So you can start in your late 30s, mid 30s, it can go all the way to your 50s. So it's a really huge chunk of a woman's life. And the gut bacteria actually makes hormones, it decreases hormones, it metabolizes hormones. And we know that as women move through menopause, the gut bacteria change a lot. And part of the reason that we get some of the symptoms that we do is because the gut bacteria are decreasing in diversity. So anything we can do to increase that gut bacterial diversity, like the food, the fasting, the fitness, are things that are going to help us through this menopausal transition. So in addition to the other three Fs that we talked about to add, you know, magnesium, to add vitamin D, to add omega-3s, to add even more fibrous foods. These are, you wanna build up that gut microbiome so it can help you metabolize the estrogen. So we know that it gets rid of the bad cancer-causing estrogen and it gives you more of the good, like, feeling good, energizing estrogen. So we know that it helps with testosterone. We know it helps with progesterone. So having that good gut bacteria can really change the trajectory of your future. So I think that most people are not talking about this in menopause, are not even addressing gut health. I know. This is key. I mean, even as someone who doesn't quite fit into that age category yet, I believe that it is never too early to start preparing myself to be successful in that transition, you know? It's exactly. There, there there's no such thing as too early to start thinking about your health in that way. Right, if you trash your gut all these years by eating uh, antibiotic-laden food and processed food and lots of sugar, you're gonna end up in a place where it's gonna be hard to yeah. build that back what up. have I set myself up for then? You know, yes. it's kind of just exactly. preparing for Preparing it. yourself for yeah. it and preparing yourself. Right now, We uh, like we said, menopause education is having a moment. It is. Because people are like, wait a second, how can we never talk about, hey, there's nutrition things we can do. Yeah. There's gut health things we can do. I always say that doing the three Fs plus, you know, adding these supplements and lifestyle changes can change your entire trajectory. It definitely can. By the way, hormone therapy, I know a lot of people have asked me about that. Hormone therapy can improve gut health in the right indication. So if you're having vasomotor symptoms, some hot flashes and night sweats, or you're having you have low bone, bone density, or you're having certain genital urinary symptoms, mm -hmm. dryness, painful sex, that's indication for hormone therapy and that will improve your gut hormone connection. Like even though people will argue like, is that natural, is that unnatural? But the studies are really supportive and those old studies that show that it was cancer causing have been debunked completely. I just wanna add that in there that it's, it's actually really safe and effective. You have to be the right candidate. You have to be under 60. You have to be within 10 years of menopause. You have to have the certain symptoms that it addresses, but it's something that along with the good diet, along with the nutrition, lifestyle changes you can add. It's good to know that those options at least exist. Exactly, you know? to be able to discuss it without the right. fear of exactly. what, what's gonna happen. So that's that. And then we have the last step of the five steps to improve your gut hormone and brain connection is understanding that what you input is what you output. So the biggest secret to understanding this is that just like the ideas we put in our head, the people we hang out with and the things we read, that is going to create our mood. But just the other way, also the food we eat 
the drinks we drink, the things we ingest into our body also has an effect on us and how we show up in this world and how we feel on a daily basis. And it's a two-way connection. The brain talks to the gut, the gut talks to the brain. So what you're inputting through the people you hang out with affects your gut. And then what you're eating food-wise is affecting the brain. If you can understand this concept, it is literally the secret, like what you input, is how you output. Yeah, it's amazing. You actually recently told me something super fascinating about how our gut bacteria actually start to kind of resemble the of, of others that we surround ourselves with. Can you explain that a little bit? To yeah, me? so if you're, you know, we all, a lot of us know the studies of, you know, if you live with someone who's obese, you're just, uh, many times more likely to be obese. Of course. If you live with someone who is an alcoholic, you're many more times likely to be an alcoholic, et cetera, et cetera. So there um, have been multiple twin studies where they looked at people who lived, twins who are identical genetically, but they lived apart and they looked at their microbiomes and they found that the twins were, their microbiomes were closer to their spouses than their twin. And that's, the microbiome is that. It's mind blowing. Yeah. <laughs> it's that it, powerful. It's that powerful and changes a lot like it can move and shift and change based on your habits based on the people you hang out with based on the food that you're eating so you have a lot of control over it and so if you want to improve your gut hormone and brain health start to change your inputs and just watch the output change yeah you said it I mean that's the most amazing part of it all is the control that you have in this situation it's like you can if you can make change in your own life based on your decisions like this with input and output I, I think if people understand that that the gut hormone brain connection is the crux of you know how we're going to be successful happy and healthy as we get older i think so many things can change i think this is really the beginning of this revolution of kind of nutritional medicine so i'm super excited you know i wanted to also say like we have an event on this coming up on january 20th here in scottsdale you can go to amymdwellness.com and check out that event we have a new course coming up on this in the new year where if you're someone who's a health coach, a doctor, a person in medicine or health that really wants to dive deep into the science and deep into the applicable steps for your clients, this is something that you should be joining. It's a gut brain hormone certification program and it's starting in January, 2024. I mean, take it from me, like it is so much easier to make healthy decisions when you understand why yeah. and what happens like when you make that decision or if you didn't make that decision what the consequence or not consequence but what that would happen what would be different you know it's it, it makes it so much easier yeah i think this is a game changer and i'm excited that we're offering it you know you have to do homework you have to take a test so we make sure that you're really really well trained you understand the concept the materials and it's asynchronous meaning that you can do it on your own time you don't necessarily have to follow our schedule it's really cool they can get more info you know by clicking in the link below or we can have it up on amymdwellness.com as well and it's all completely led by Dr. Shaw. Yeah. So if you want more of a one-on-one -on -one kind of feel to learning more from her, then that would be a really good opportunity. Super exciting. Thank you so much for joining. This is Dr. Amy Shaw, Rachel Brown. We are here at Dr. Confidential. Thank you so much for joining.